In today's video, we're diving deep into the intricacies of short covering in AMC swaps, the rising margin requirements, and the short settlement dynamics. We'll also examine a tweet from Peruvian Bull and the significant implications from a UBS trader's chat. This trader revealed that UBS plans to exercise 485,000 calls between now and earnings to exit their position related to Bill H. Wang, leveraging a recent share offering to avoid the SEC's 10% insider rule. This situation revolves around UBS attempting to extricate itself from the toxic swaps involving an MC and GME inherited from Archigos. Let's unpack what this means for the market and the broader implications. Hey, welcome to a MC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell. So you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember, this is not a financial advice video. Firstly, it's crucial to understand the background. Archigo's capital management infamously went short on GME and AMC using swaps, which eventually led to its collapse. Credit Suisse assumed these toxic positions post Archigo's downfall, which subsequently contributed to Credit Suisse's own financial turmoil. Eventually, UBS inherited these swaps when they acquired Credit Suisse. This chain of events underscores the toxic nature of these swaps and the financial strain they impose on the institutions involved. The UBS traders chat suggests a significant move to mitigate risk and possibly offload a portion of their liabilities. The notion of UBS exercising 485,000 calls indicates a substantial attempt to hedge against further losses and manage their exposure. However, there are varying opinions on whether this action is driven by GME offering an out or if it's purely a strategic move by UBS to manage their risk. Looking at the broader market, it's evident that these positions are a major concern for UBS. The Swiss regulators have been proactive, demanding UBS prepare for potential wind-up liquidations by increasing their initial margin requirements significantly to the tune of $12 to $17 billion. Austin. This move highlights the regulator's awareness of the precarious nature of these swaps and the potential for margin calls that could trigger a liquidation. Another layer to this situation involves the utilization of reverse repo capital from the Federal Reserve by UBS, using Credit Suisse as a vehicle. This maneuver further underscores the complexity and the financial gymnastics being employed to navigate these toxic positions. The Peruvian bull's insights add another dimension to this scenario. The focus here is on the desperation and urgency of UBS to cover these shorts and exit their toxic positions. This urgency is evidenced by their participation in the recent share offering, strategically designed to avoid regulatory pitfalls while managing their exposure. Speculation has been rife over the years about UBS's strategies, with some suggesting they might be buying long calls as synthetic longs to hedge against their short positions. This tactic would allow them to mitigate losses while pushing the burden of buying shares onto market makers. The notion here is that if a squeeze occurs, UBS could potentially limit their losses by having these long positions as a counterbalance. This scenario also brings into focus the behavior of other market participants. Many short sellers acknowledge the inevitability of a squeeze in stocks like AMC and GME. Their strategies now involve hedging to minimize losses. For some, this might mean incurring significant losses, but offsetting them partially through strategic long positions. Additionally, the introduction of platforms like Edixum Global, which promises more efficient settlement processes, is noteworthy. The timing of its launch coincides with significant market events, including high trading volumes in AMC and GME stocks, and the return of influential market players like Roaring Kitty. The involvement of firms like GSR and Virtu Financial in Edixum Global highlights a concerted effort to streamline settlement processes amidst rising regulatory scrutiny, such as the implementation of T plus one settlement. The adoption of Edixum Global by major players like Virtu Financial and Citadel Securities underscores the broader industry move towards more efficient settlement processes, likely in response to the tightening regulatory environment. The T plus one settlement cycle which expedites trade settlement, exerts additional pressure on short sellers by reducing the time window for covering short positions. This shift to T plus one settlement can reveal the extent of counterfeit shares and other irregularities within the market. The expedited settlement process limits the ability of short sellers to manipulate the system, thereby exposing their positions more transparently. 
This increased transparency is a significant concern for firms heavily involved in short selling, as it complicates their ability to maintain their positions without incurring significant losses. A look at the financials of firms like Virtu Financial reveals the impact of these changes. Virtu, known for its short positions in AMC, is experiencing severe financial strain, evident from declining revenues and increasing long-term debt. Their swift adoption of platforms like Edixum Global is a strategic move to mitigate the risks associated with these new regulatory requirements and the inherent challenges of their short positions. Citadel Securities' involvement further illustrates the systemic nature of these issues. As one of the key players in the short-selling arena, their participation in platforms that facilitate efficient settlement processes indicates a recognition of the need to adapt to a changing regulatory landscape. This adaptation is crucial for maintaining their market position while managing the risks associated with their extensive short positions. The issue of trade settlement is at the heart of the market's current challenges. As noted by industry observers, the proliferation of counterfeit shares complicates the settlement process, making efficient and transparent settlement systems essential. The move from T plus 2 to T plus 1 is a regulatory step aimed at tightening the market and reducing the scope for manipulation. The increasing prevalence of failures to deliver FTDS further complicates the picture. Stocks like AMC and Lucid have been significant FTD securities, indicating persistent settlement issues. The millions of FTDS in these stocks highlight the challenges in locating and settling these positions, exacerbated by declining stock prices in some cases. The market's response to these challenges is telling. Short sellers, recognizing the tightening regulatory environment and the growing transparency, are increasingly resorting to platforms that promise more efficient settlement. This shift is a defensive move to manage the risks associated with their positions and avoid regulatory penalties. As we look ahead, the implications of these developments are significant. The increased scrutiny and regulatory tightening are likely to continue exerting pressure on short sellers, potentially leading to more liquidations and market volatility. The involvement of major financial players in platforms like Edixum Global underscores the systemic nature of these issues and the broader market's efforts to adapt to the new regulatory landscape. In conclusion, the dynamics of short covering in AMC and GME swaps, the rising margin requirements, and the evolving regulatory environment are reshaping the market. Institutions like UBS are navigating complex challenges to manage their exposure and mitigate risks. The broader market is adapting through new platforms and strategies to cope with increased transparency and regulatory scrutiny. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.